It's the Sunday Pilot here from Sim Sunday with yet another port over video from the main channel. In this episode, we fly the Captain Sim Boeing 777-200ER from London Gatwick across to St. Lucia in the Caribbean. And this is the second of two videos in my St. Lucia 2020 mini-series, documenting a journey that my wife and I would make in real life from Glasgow to Gatwick and then over to St. Lucia during October 2020. Again, this is a very early video in my Sim Time series, so I apologize in advance for the quality, but I hope you enjoy. It is Graham with another Sim Time here on Living the Dream, and today we're in London Gatwick's North Terminal in a British Airways 777-200ER from Captain Sim, and today we're flying to St. Lucia. All going well when this video is published on YouTube. Fiona and I will actually be in St. Lucia, and we will have taken this flight from London Gatwick's North Terminal to Huonora International Airport, also known as Viewpoint. In this video, I'm not planning to go into the detail behind setting up this flight. I just want to make it a very simple video to show you what is possible with a PC, a decent graphics card, and of course, prepared 3D version 4.5, which I'm using today with the Captain Sim 777-200 from Boeing. However, I have programmed this flight plan from SimBrief. And as you can see, we're taking off from London Gatwick, runway 26 left, which is the same runway we landed on, on the EasyJet A319 down from Glasgow. Departing westbound out of Gatwick, heading out towards Land's End, then really across the Atlantic, over the Azores, before heading down towards the Caribbean, approaching from Martinique in the north, and heading down to St Lucia. I'm expecting to be landing on runway 10. Our final altitude in the flight today across to St Lucia will be flight level 380 or 38,000 feet, but we'll have to take a little bit of time to get there. First of all, climbing to 26,000 feet, 32,000 feet, 34,000 feet, 36,000 feet, and finally 38,000 feet. For those of you who are interested, the scenery we have loaded here for London Gatwick is from UK 2000. I also have the Orbix True Earth series 1, 2 and 3 for the United Kingdom. And when we arrive in St Lucia, you will see the scenery from FSDT, which provides both the Uenora Airport at Viewpoint and Castries Airport at the capital city. As I said earlier, I'm not going to take you through the complete setup and configuration of this aircraft, including the inputting of all of the details into the FMC. But as you can imagine, I did complete this before pushback and taxi. Right, time to get the APU fired up ahead of pushback and taxi, including switching on the external lights. And this is what happens when you don't follow the pre-startup checklist. In this case, I have fired up the APU, but I forgot to switch on the generator before disconnecting the circuit from the ground power unit. Anyway, disaster averted due to captain stupidity. It's time to order up the pushback truck. Delivered today, courtesy of GSX. Hello, captain. We are ready for pushback. Locking gear. Departure check completed. Bypass pin inserted. Release parking brakes. Commencing push. All engines clear. Start at will.
set parking brakes. Waiting your confirmation for good engine start. Unlocking gear. Bypass pin removed. Left is clear, right is clear. With pushback complete, it's time to switch off the APU and switch on the taxi lights. The departure runway on this afternoon's flight had changed several times, the original being 08 right, the easterly runway. However, when I requested taxi, it was clear that ATC were giving me 26 left, the westerly departing runway, and that required some reconfiguration of the FMC prior to taxiing. The good news, of course, being that the taxi distance was going to be a lot shorter than it would have been if we'd been heading out to runway 08 right. Approaching two six left on runway two six left. Heading west towards Cornwall, the centre tank had finally 
drained dry and it was telling me that it was time to switch off the pumps concentrating on the fuel coming in from the wings as we headed out west towards Land's End. And for me the next seven hours was simply about sitting back monitoring the instruments as we cruised out over the Atlantic stepping up to 36,000 feet and finally 38,000 feet where we will come back to this flight a little bit later as we make our approach towards St Lucian's Huonora International Airport. Talking to Piarco Control in Trinidad, it's clear that I'm not reacting quickly enough to their instructions as I descend towards 12,000 feet, just to the north of St Lucia, where from 12,000 feet you can clearly see Pigeon Island, separated from mainland St Lucia by a causeway created in 1972, and that causeway is also the home to Sandals Grand St Lucian. Right, enough sightseeing over the gorgeous island of St Lucia, it's time to get those landing lights on and set the fasten seatbelt sign as we make a visual approach to runway 10 at St Lucian's Huonora International Airport. And that just goes to show you how close to real world flight sim is with ultimate traffic live. You've just heard the inbound American Airlines from Miami just giving clearance to land ahead of us and in the real world that would happen because in every trip we've made to St Lucia over the years the American Airlines 757 from Miami had arrived just before us. However what isn't so real is I don't believe that American Airlines are flying the 757 anymore and I'm not sure what they are flying between Miami and St Lucia these days. However I've no doubt that the American Airlines flight will be arriving in real world just before the British Airways 2151 from London Gatwick. With the island of St Vincent just to the south of St Lucia it's time for us to make our final approach into Huonora International Airport. And spinning around you can see that St Lucian's national treasures, the Pitons, are clearly visible as we make our approach. If you look back to videos that I made in October 2016 and again in October 2017 you will see us make this approach for real on board of British Airways 777-200 from the Club World Cabin. And with a wicked crosswind blowing between the two mountains I even surprised myself that I made this visual approach into runway 10 at St Lucia.
taxiing into the stand, it is clear that Ultimate Traffic has delivered other aircraft to the normal stand where this British Airways would park up. So today, I'm going to have to take this remote stand next to the American Airlines 757 that has just arrived a few minutes earlier from Miami. Again, it's not exactly real world, but it'll have to do. It's only a game at the end of the day. And this is where I'm going to bring this episode of Sim Time to a close. I hope to bring you a trip report from this actual flight for real in two videos time as Fiona and I make our trip from London Gatwick to St Lucia on board a British Airways 777-200 in the Club World Cabin. So until then, thank you very much for watching.